every Saturday. Local chefs create savory and artistic dishes for you to enjoy making in your own home. So add a new recipe to your collection that is sure to be a family favorite here at Scenic Vantage Point. Welcome to What's Cooking at the Market with Port Huron Hospital. I'm Doris Seidel from Port Huron Hospital. And we're here today at Vantage Point with the live audience. And we have our very own chef, Dave Strainy, who's also from Port Huron Hospital. And today he's gonna to be making corn crab chowder, rosemary skewers, and fresh mozzarella and tomato salad. So good morning, Dave. Good morning, Doris. Can you tell us more about what you're fixing for us? Yes, I can. Uh, we're gonna start with the uh, fresh mozzarella, tomato salad, sometimes known as a caprese salad. Can you say that again? Caprese. Caprese? <laughs> That's the best Italian I got, sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> well we start with some fresh tomatoes. Usually you start, use a Roma tomato to do um, the salad. And all you gotta do is just slice them thinly, um, you know, this away. So nice thin slices. Holding fingers back, of course. Yes. Use a sharp knife. Okay. And tomatoes so, are so great this time of yeah, year, right? They're perfect. You can find tomatoes everywhere. And anybody that grows them knows, wow, you got a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're always trying to find something to do with them. So you have your slices and then your fresh mozzarella. And usually this is called buffalo mozzarella. Okay. You know, it's an Italian cheese. Okay. And that's available in most markets? Most markets. You can find it even at Meijer. You know, it's, it's pretty common. Um, there's lots of different ways you can you can get it in little you know packs like this. Sometimes it's in a brine. They're little balls. Sometimes they're logs. So there's many different ways that it comes. Real soft cheese, uh, real mild, delicate flavor. Um, I love this stuff. This is good stuff. And it see it's really soft. So then you're just slicing. Yep, just little wow. slices like that. Very easy. Very simple. Sometimes cheeses can be tough to slice. Yeah. Well, again, if you have a sharp knife, that oh, always helps that's too. That's a trick, huh? Yes. So you have your few of your little slices like this, okay? Is this your own recipe or did you uh, inspired by something to uh, come up with this? Nope, it's a, it's, a, um, it's a known recipe. I stole it, I'll tell you, I okay. stole it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then fresh basil, and that's the other part of this. So you just take uh, some leaves of your basil. You don't want any stems in there. Just peel them off. And again, if you're growing this stuff at home too, you <laughs> always seem to have a lot of basil and a lot of herbs whenever you grow them. And there seems to always be something you don't know what to do with. Here's a great way that to get rid of great. some of it. Yeah. Good stuff. So then you just take your leaves and here's a trick. You stack them all up and then roll them like this. It's helpful so hints here today. It's roll just like that. And then you can slice them like this. Wow, that makes it very easy Simple. to accomplish that. Yes. So then putting it together, have a little tray. And then you put a tomato and then a slice of cheese on it. And then you keep going around like this. Makes it very appetizing. It looks pretty. Very appealing. Just like that. A little bit of fresh basil on top. And there you have it. That's Very easy simple. To a salad, right? Yeah, it's simple. And then you can drizzle if you like uh, balsamic vinegar is always good on these. If you like a little olive oil, um, just to make it uh, give it a little more flavor. Or it's you can it's use that it just simple, like this or as well. just like that. Great. So what a simple salad. There it is. And wonderful for the middle of August. Nothing to it. You get to use up some of those herbs and tomatoes and all that stuff in your garden. So great. So very simple, and that's how we start. Um, We'll go on to what I'm calling crab cake chowder. Crab cake chowder. Which is a little bit, sounds a little different, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I know what a crab cake is, yes. but I haven't thought about that in a chowder. Well, what it is, it's uh, using fresh corn and crab, but using um, Old Bay's or seasoning. And Old Bay's very common in crab cakes, so that's kind of why oh, I call okay. that crab cake chowder. So kind of a traditional seasoning, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yes. So you start with a little bit of olive oil in your hot pot and you're gonna put your onions, just some diced white onions, and again, you guys, um, if you grow your onions or all your stuff, here's okay. more vegetables you get to use. So you just wanna kind of soften those up a little bit. A Little bit of red pepper. All right. 
A lot of red pepper. Okay. okay. I like red pepper. Change your mind on that yeah. one. That's easy enough to do. A little bit of garlic. Um, already chopped up. Okay. Now you usually chop yours up yourself or do you you can purchase chopped up garlic and things like that, right? I cheat because you know it's a lot easier when <laughs> you know you need you need garlic now. Okay. It's already chopped up. So, but I do, I use fresh, but you know, yeah. sometimes. It's a little easier, right? It is a little bit easier, well, so I'll admit good, it. Good shortcuts to take. <laughs> I will cheat. Make cooking easier sometimes. Yep. Oh, I do need my spatula. So then you're just gonna soften up your onions a little bit. Um, kind of brown them. And. Smell that. Yeah, yeah. that smell good. Mm. You can put a little bit of salt and pepper in there too right now. Give it a little bit of, a little bit of flavor while it's softening up. Okay, so now that it's, it, they're starting to soften a little bit, you're gonna add a little bit of water. And it's about, this recipe makes about a gallon. Oh, so okay. it's about a quart and a half or so just of water. So that goes in there. Just adding that to everything you've softened up in there yes. already then, right? And then that's gonna start to boil. Um, and another great thing, Potatoes. Who doesn't love potatoes? And again, fresh this time of year already, yes, right? They're beautiful this Looks time like of year. Red skins. Yep, they're red skins. Um, you can really use any potato you want. It doesn't matter. Red skins, yellows, whites. There's good Michigan potatoes out there too. So once that starts boiling, you're gonna add your potatoes. Again, it's about a quart or so of potatoes. And they take about, you know, from this stage on, it's about 20 minutes or so to get the potatoes softened up. Okay. Um, so that's going to take a little while to cook. One thing I want to talk about, and most people don't know what roux is, mm. and it's not a street in Paris, but roux is, um, it's a thickening agent. And all it is is basically it's margarine and flour mixed together and kind of cooked. And you add it to soups, stews, gravies, things like that to thicken them up a little bit. Okay. So a lot of people don't know, you know. I never knew necessarily had a name before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, like grandma used to make it with, you know, water and flour right. and you'd shake it's it up and right. mix it in the pan or something. This is um, something we d you do in, in kitchens. You always have roux around to thicken things up. And um, so I don't want to talk about roux. The other thing I want to talk about is crab. And, you know, for this particular recipe, I like the good crab, sure. but you don't have to use the good crab because okay. crab's really expensive. Um, I don't know if you guys have crabs sitting around in your freezer you don't know what to do with. <laughs> uh, not typically not. my freezer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you can, you know, you can go with, um, you know, they, it comes in a can and the canned stuff's okay. It's not bad. Um, the leg and claw, it's a little bit cheaper. So you can make it a little less expensive than the way that I'm doing it. I like the lump crab meat and the same thing you use in crab cakes and um, kind of higher end crab dishes. Okay. So, but there's, there's ways to make it a little bit more cost effective. So we're here on the water and a lot of people go fishing. Is there some <laughs> local fish you could use? Make it a fish chowder instead? You could. Um, some of the, um, your hardier, your, like your firmer fishes you could put okay. in there. If you put in a softer fish, it, it might just fall apart. It wouldn't be as, nice you know okay. so firmer fish is like walleye would probably be a little a little soft to put in there it might kind of fall apart but some of your heavier you know you could put trouts a little bit heavier okay. All right. um i wouldn't put salmon in it but that's me. okay all right and it would definitely give a different flavor <laughs> it sure than would. The crab would oh yeah yeah there. and the crab kind of makes a, a particular flavor in this sure. in this you know that's different now the other part of this it's my favorite part because I love corn, but using fresh corn. Mm. And this time of year, oh man, yeah. I, I was walking corn. to the market earlier, there's <laughs> lots of fresh corn over there. Yeah. And I've already cooked the corn, so you, you can do it either way. I like it cooked already, uh, makes it a little bit easier, you know, a little quicker to put this together. In this recipe, it takes about five ears of fresh corn to go in there. So, at this point, we're ready to put the corn in. So all, all we're gonna do is, I, I like cutting it, you start halfway instead okay. of the whole way. Yeah, I've always been a little reluctant to do this. Yeah, so you go halfway and then it doesn't get all over the place. Okay, oh yes. See? That's why I don't like doing yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> and then just turn around and finish off that side. And just right into the pot. I don't right have into to the pot. Do it on a cutting board for head nope, time? Nope, you don't have to if you want to, hey. And it kind of falls off, falls apart as individual kernels as you do that, right? Yeah, as it, as it cooks and you stir it up, it's gonna, yeah, there'll okay. be pretty much individual kernels at that point. So cooking so. it ahead of time doesn't affect the flavor, doesn't make it mushy or anything nope. like that as it cooks? Nope, it works perfect. Oh, 
so again, is this your recipe or one you modified from somewhere else? I made it up. So oh, okay. I just kind of, it sounded good and started playing around with it and I got it to the point where okay. I like it. So, <laughs> and it took, you know, it takes a little bit of time sometimes to develop it and get the right flavor you want and the right consistency and all that stuff, so. How'd you develop an interest in being a chef? Well, you know, I grew up cooking. Uh, my whole family, great cooks, yeah. and I like to eat. So. Well, that always helps. <laughs> and I bet your wife just glad to let you take that over in the family, yeah, didn't she? has she? no problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this a, a popular dish at the hospital? It's not one that I make a whole lot. Sometimes for special, uh, special occasions, okay. special events, I'll make this kind of thing because, you know, it is a little bit more expensive with the crab in it. And, um, but we do make, you know, in the cafeteria, we do make a corn chowder. Yeah. So it's similar to this. Minus the um, crab. Minus the crab, yeah. <laughs> a little bit, done a little bit differently because um, we do have to cook in bulk. You know, we do cook for a lot of people. How many people <laughs> so, do you usually serve a day there? We serve um, three meals a day, probably about 15 to 1,800 meals, three meals a day, wow. including patients and then cafeteria visitors and, of course, all the staff we feed. So uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big operation we have over there. And, and your soups are among some of your... Uh, more favorite items, right? They are. We do. Always we, homemade? We always make a homemade soup every day. So at least at least one, sometimes two homemade soups a day. And yes, they're very popular yeah. and uh, yeah. people do tend to like them all year round and not just, you know, when it's cold out, you know. Yeah. So. So that corn just cooks right in there with yep. all your other ingredients that you have in there, the potatoes and the tomatoes and pepper. No, we didn't put tomatoes no in tomatoes. this one. We no. had peppers in there. Peppers in there. That's right. So yeah, we're just going to keep cooking this down and, and getting these potatoes nice and soft. And right about this point is when I start to put the Old Bay in. And Old Bay, again, is that crab cake staple. you got to have Old Bay in a crab cake. There's just no other way about it. And, you know, I'll tell you about crab cakes, because crab cakes is like, I love crab cakes, but it's a lot like chili, and everybody has their own recipe. Yes, you know, you can make yes. crab cakes a hundred different ways. Oh, you just pour it in. they're all good. You just <laughs> pour it in, yeah. I do have measurements on my recipe. Okay. Even though it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, I do. <laughs> So a little bit of Old Bay. And then you let this cook down. And what you want to do, you know, you want to taste this and make sure you got your seasonings adjusted right before we're, we're going to add more ingredients. So it's, okay. that's a, a good idea to put this stuff in now. So season to your taste, Your basically. taste, yeah. You know, Old Bay has, has a very um, distinct flavor to it. Okay. And it's just a variety of, of herbs and spices in there. Is that basically what it's made of? I don't even know what's in it. Okay. <laughs> I just know it's really I good. I didn't mean to put it down the spot no, like that. No, that's all right. Look, it's the first thing you use it for is. seafood. <laughs> yeah, it, it can go on many things, but it's it's uh, well known for uh, for crab cakes. and um, So, what's left? We're going to let that cook a little bit longer. Okay. Um, and... Do you have any other popular dishes that you serve at the hospital on a um, basis? We talked about the soups. Yeah, we do. Um, um, one of our, our other famous dishes is our mac and cheese. Oh, you know? yeah. People really like that day. Yeah, and they know when it's not done right, too. Well, they tell you, do they? <laughs> oh, yeah. It wasn't really good today, you know. Um, so we, we work really hard on, especially those casseroles, um, because people do like them and they like them the same way all the time. Because um, we do a lot of homemade stuff there. We do, um, especially the casseroles, the soups. Um, we actually grill steak and serve steak there too. Okay. Sounds and, great. And it's relatively inexpensive too, you know, because the hospital is known for having good cheap food. That's what we do. Okay. So. Well, Dave, we'll hear more about that in our second segment. So okay. um, everyone's going to hear again. The audience is going to get a sample and take home the recipe cards today. But right now we're going to take a short break so Dave can get the ingredients together for his raspberry skewers. And then uh, please join us uh, when we return for part two. And for What's Cooking at the Market, we're Fort Huron Hospital. Need a quick snack? I have a great idea for a granola bar. What it is, it's dry cereal, some oatmeal, caro syrup, some Splenda brown sugar, and peanut butter. Now you can add raisins if you like, but it's really simple. You cook up the caro syrup and the brown sugar, you add the peanut butter to it and add it to the dry ingredients. Mix them together, put them in a pan and let them set. Simple as that. It's a little bit healthier than your regular granola bar, and you can decide what goes in it. For more healthy snack recipes, go to portherenhospital.org slash recipes. Welcome to part two.
two of what's cooking at the market with Port Huron Hospital. And I'm Doris Seidel here with Chef Stra Def Dave Strandy. <laughs> Sorry about that, Dave. And we're both from Port Huron Hospital as well. And we're down here at Vantage Point and um, right off the St. Clair River in Port Huron, Michigan. In our first segment, Dave made some wonderful I'm not going to say the Italian. I'm going to say <laughs> tomato and uh, mozzarella salad and started some corn uh, crab cake chowder. Crab cake chowder. And now he's going to start into some rosemary skewers for us. Yes. Right, Dave? And I'll, I'll go back over what we did. I started with some onion and red pepper, a little bit of garlic and olive oil in there to get that going. Added some water. Got potatoes and fresh corn in there. So that's going. And we'll get back and finish that up after we do the rosemary skewers. So rosemary. Looks like Christmas trees, very, very fragrant. Um, and this is kind of a smaller skewer you can do, real easy, but it gives it a lot of flavor. And, you know, when you grow rosemary, it's just like any of those other herbs, you always got a lot of it left, okay? So you cut it off, and you want to find there, some that are a little bit heavier, a little more woody. It's okay. going to make this a little bit easier. All right, okay? and for people who don't grow rosemary, you can find this, again, in yep. most markets? Most markets have this. Um, it's not that hard to find. Okay. Um, so, just starting with this, all you got to do is strip a little bit off. That simple. Right there. So you leave a little bit on the end, strip it off, so you have a couple little, nice little branches here. Okay? And I'll do a couple of them. And that rosemary smells great. Mm-hmm. It gets on your hands, and your hands smell good <laughs> all day. Yeah. Yes. Nothing yes. not to like about rosemary. Yes. So you have a few of your stalks, okay. I guess, ready to go. Okay. Now I have swordfish and that, what, for this you want to use a firmer type of fish. Okay. You know, walleye's not going to work. So we're not going to catch much out of <laughs> no. like, the, the rivers or no, lakes right around no here. No perch, no problem. wall, okay. you know. So like tuna, swordfish, um, halibut? halibut could work. You know, the firmer white fishes, shark, if you got shark. Okay. So I have a nice fillet here. So all you're going to do is we're going to cut it into smaller chunks. again with a nice sharp nice knife, sharp makes the knife. job a lot easier, yes. right? Yep, make sure you get, if you have a little skin on the end of there, you want to make sure you have that off, okay. So nice little chunks like this. Okay, so now you got your fish is ready, that's ready. Then we also have, I put on here onions, peppers. Um, you can put on what, whatever you have in your garden or whatever okay. you just bought at the marketplace. You know, it's, it's, like it's kind of up other, to you. Any other skewer, whatever. Yep. Whatever you like. Whatever you like. Or don't like you. Put on your friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I like the red onion. So, and then for these, you want to leave these a little bit bigger pieces. Okay. So you got nice big chunks of red onion. Really. And then peppers. Yes. And whatever peppers you got. So green, yellow, red, jalapeno. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, you're going to cut these a little bit bigger chunks. And then I have mushrooms. So right. that's how I'm building mine. And again, whatever you got, whatever you like, I won't be offended if you do it your own way. Okay. Okay. So you start with your piece of fish. Okay. Put it on the rosemary <laughs> skewer like that. Difficult for you there, isn't it? A little bit sometimes. They're a little, they're a little, these are a little small, so it makes it a little more difficult. Little piece of onion, a little piece, a nice piece of pepper. And then a mushroom on the end. Easy enough. Done. There's your rosemary skewer. <laughs> I'll make a couple more. And what you want to do then, after you get these kind of built, you can put a little bit of uh, olive oil, some garlic on them. Um, if you like teriyaki, I mean, you can flavor them how you like. And then uh, put them on the grill. You can also. If you like yours to be nice and green kind of still where they don't burn up, you can soak these in water a little bit and that'll keep them from burning oh, up too much. Okay, all right. And if the skewer is a little bit longer, you just put a little bit more on the sure. end there or sure. whatever. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Okay. So really simple, but really good. Yeah, that's a nice one. A little onion. You can do, go in any order too. You don't have to follow my order. <laughs> but I like the way that looks. Well, it's a nice color combination <laughs> yeah. there you have going there. Yeah. With that red onion against that green pepper. Yep. You want it to look nice, too. You want to impress your friends. There's an easy oh, way. Oh, that's one way to do it, huh? <laughs> there it is. My friends know better. They expect much <laughs> cooking from me. So. <laughs> All right. We'll get one more of these. I think my chowder's just about ready for it me. It smells so. really great. <laughs> you know. And again, these are all very healthy 
Yes. Um, it, things that you're fixing today, I mean, real, I mean, there's no Oops. fat in any of these things nope. you have here, except you said maybe a little olive oil. Olive oil, and that's good olive's fat. healthy, right? Yeah, it's good stuff. So yeah, we are, and I didn't mention that, but we are keeping it kind of healthy today. We are, it's very much so, very much so. All right, so I'll just put these right here. They look nice and pretty. So when you put them on the grill? So, yep, then you grill them. Um, the important thing is that you want your fish to be 145 degrees. Okay. And being that they're really small, it's not a hard temperature to get to at all. Um, and the other, I'll give you another trick here. You can put them on the grill and kind of sear them, put them in a pan and finish them in the oven. Oh, so there's a little trick for you. you. So you that go. also will keep the, the rosemary from burning up too much okay. too. Because that right. open flame will get to it. And so about how long would it take to get to 140 degrees? 140, 140. 145. 145. That's, that's your temperature for fish. Uh, probably about, depending how thick you cut it like that, might take about 10 minutes. Okay. So, and again, because whatever season. Because it sets seasoning. off that grill a little bit. Yeah, it does. It? Yep. Yeah. And, that, and that's another reason to put them in the oven too. And then, you know, if you're cooking other stuff, you don't have to worry about running back to the grill and coming back okay. inside. Everything's kind of in there. And then you get the nice smoky flavor from the grill along with, you the know, ease the, of. the ease of having it done in the kitchen. So, all right, let's get back to our chowder. It's been Oops. cooking there for quite a while now, Dave. How long has it been cooking? It's been about 15 minutes, and potatoes are now starting to get a little bit soft. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, again, just as a reminder, we start it with some garlic in there and some on onion and red pepper. Red pepper. Yep. And then um, we added some water in um, the potatoes and some nice fresh corn in there, right? Yep. That's what we have. And now to finish it off, and this is where it gets creamy, and you can use... This is where we'll talk about uh, being healthy, healthy or not. Okay, I know what's coming here, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm using half and half, so I'm okay. going healthier than cream, but you can also do it with milk. Okay. If you, you know, skim milk's fine. It won't be as creamy the less fat you sure. put in it, just so you know. Sure. So that goes in next. But yeah, heavy cream. Uh, yeah. That's yes. a little bit much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so half and half's a good compromise, um, but yeah, you made reference to the roux before your yep. grandma having that, and I bet she would have used the whole cream, wouldn't she? <laughs> oh, yeah, she would have. <laughs> <laughs> so we get that cooking up a little bit, and then um, once that starts going, that's when you really want to adjust your seasonings at that point, okay. before you put the roux in to thicken it up, and before you, you put the crab in, make sure it's seasoned the way you like it. You know, is there enough pepper in there? Is there enough Old Bay? And you can, you know, adjust it okay. from there. So let's say it's good. All right. Well, I'm sure it is. Mm, yeah, I think it is. I can taste it. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to add a little bit of roux. And you know how much roux is really going to depend on how much liquid is in here, how much you need. OK. So it's kind of a, a guessing game. OK. So now, some, some degree, yes. Now with the roux, you made that ahead of time. Made it ahead of so time. So it's ready at this yeah. point in time. Yeah. So now I expect all of you to have roux made and sitting in your kitchen at all times now. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll come visit you, Dave. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you let the roux get in there and cook down. So it's going to take a little bit once it gets back to a boil to let that flour do its thing and, so and tighten this. everything up in here. So. Okay. And we haven't added the crab yet. Not it's just yet. sort of in here yeah, waiting, it isn't it? Is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you want to make sure you got your consistency right, the flavors right crab last. And one of the reasons for that is these these uh, this lump crab, they're a nice little little package of crab. Okay. A little slice of heaven right there. And you really don't want these to fall apart too much. Okay. And that's why one of the reasons I wait till the end to put it in so that it doesn't fall apart and you get, you know, you get a nice bite of crab every once in a while. Okay. You know? And it's that, gonna that's why I talked earlier, if you change it to a fish, you want to use yeah. a nice firm fish, right. otherwise you don't it, it just kind of falls apart right. in there and it's not, right. not okay. quite as good. So that's one of the reasons I wait till the end too to, to put that in. Okay. So. And you don't want to wreck your crab either, you know? Yeah. Nobody well, likes yeah, that. so you invest in crab for something you want to be able to uh, <laughs> yeah, you make enjoy sure you it, taste right? it well. Yes. Yep. Yes. Or even lobster, you know, if you got lobster Ooh, sitting around. It. Yes, yeah, I always have lobster. Not a yeah, problem. Yeah, most people do, I'm sure. Yes. All right, it needs a little bit more. So this ought, to, this ought to take care of it. Okay, now is this something you serve <laughs> your family at home? I have, yes. Oh, and they okay. like it, yes. All right, Great. so that's, we're going to call that just about good. It's not too thick because you want a little bit of soupiness. See how it's... Okay, oh yes. Very pretty colors. Just, just about perfect right there. 
and then you turn the heat down a little bit so it's not quite boiling. Because and, you've and been cooking that on high pretty yeah, much the whole time, right? right? to get those potatoes soft right. and everything. So then the crab, and that's about a pound of crab. The recipe I have makes about a gallon, so a pound of crab to about a gallon okay. of Okay. You can use and a them. gallon will feed how many? That'll feed probably about mm, 10 people. Okay. Depending, you know, what part of the... How hungry they are? How, yeah. <laughs> how much of the main course are you putting into your, you right. know, your chowder? Okay. But yeah, you can get about 10 people out of that. Wow. So then all you're trying to do is just really warm the crab up so you don't have to cook it a whole lot more after that. Sorry, you viewers at home can't uh, smell <laughs> this because it smells wonderful. Can you hear, smell it? They're here with us today? Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. And that's it. It's that's done. That's it? Okay. So we've had a great summer recipes here today with our uh, tomato and mozzarella, and our, our skewers made with swordfish and other fresh veggies, and then our chowder with fresh corn. That was mm. the epitome that goes in there today, isn't it? <laughs> yep, and then, well, that's of course, what makes it. We won't, uh, you know, the, the large jumbo crab that goes in there really yeah. warms that all up. So yeah. everyone here in the audience is going to get to sample these dishes and they have the opportunity to take home the recipes with you. And they're also on the website at porthuronhospital.org. Uh, this program will air throughout the week on Channel 6 and will be available to you on YouTube. Uh, Tammy Korchek, an RN at Port Huron Hospital with our lap band center, will be here with the chef from Fuel Wood Fire Grill next week. Um, and again, that's at 11 a.m. on Saturday. And they'll be making salmon cakes and the signature barbecue sauce. So until then, have a great week, enjoy the day, and stay healthy. Mm -hmm.